quick disclaimer here. Um, this is something I wrote in like 2009 or 2010, I guess. Probably, yeah, 2010. Uh, when I was like 15 or 16, it was about 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning. It was just raining out of there, I think. And um, I made it a bit better because when I got the file from Rain, it was the original file. It was all out of order. It was terrible. It was this cancerous fan fiction story I wrote to make fun of bad furry stories and stuff like that. I was originally going to post to fanfiction.net. Never did that. Uh, so here we go. The story is called um, Rayo Wolf, which was a combination of Bro and Beowulf. I can't believe I'm reading this again. Here we go. Once upon a time, there was a wolf boy named Mark. Mark and his mom went grocery shopping one day and bought some awesome food that was made of wind. This includes sushi and chalupas. Christ on a crutch. Now I'm hungry. Mark's mom took him home and unpacked the fatty food of awesome when she remembered something she had forgotten but presently remembered. Honey, she exclaimed, I forgot to pick up my dildo at the celebrity penis casting shop. It's in the shape of Ron Jeremy's dick. With that, she ran out the door and jumped in her Toyota Prius because she was so douchin that she could only drive a Prius. She never returned. Mark realized that he was running out of chalupas by the third day. I'm going to starve to death, Mark whimpered, sad and forgotten. And that is when Mark found a cabbage. As he went to take a bite, a voice said, Dude, stop gnawing on my left testicle. No homo. And that's when Mark realized it wasn't just any cabbage, it could talk. Holy shit, a talking cabbage? Yes, Mark. Now shut up. Anyway, the talking cabbage named Philip tells Mark of a place full of femboys and internets, but heavily guarded by a troll dragon named Miguel. So then, if Philip proposes they go take the precious pervy treasures the dragon has by force. He bestowed Mark the magical collared shirt of douchery, which added plus 20 to his bro stat. He also gave him the lacrosse stick of fuck you, which added plus 15 to his frat boy stat. He then gave Mark the chucks of the white boy, adding plus five to his baller stat and changing Mark's name by default to Slim Shady. The newly dubbed Bro Douche Frat asked the narrator, My name is what? Slim Shady. Moving on. They traveled across the street to Miguel's cave, which was located directly next to Kim Jong Il's Too Cool for School 24 7 Rat Battle Slash Shot Party. We're North Korean, Bro Smith, said Slim Shady in just about the most douche, white, and frat voice you have ever heard. Philip saw the dragon's cave, but decided that he should stay at the yacht party for some hoes and booze. So Slim Shady and Philip got super hammered and super laid until like 2 in the morning, the most douche time to stop a party. Philip stated that they should probably get off the boat in the Brocean and go pillage the dragon's cave. Agreeing with the Brossom Cabbage, Slim Shady said a prayer to Brosidon, god of the Brosian. O lord of all things Broke and Brossom, help us deliver a brolicost of pain upon our enemies. He ended the prayer in the traditional way bros do, with one word, word, and off they went. So upon entering Miguel's cave, they heard some random Mexican rat playing excessively loud. Philip, using his cabbage speed and knowledge, wrote Slim Shady the illest rhymes ever. Slim Shady rapped his way to the dragon and rapped so hard he destroyed the boombox. Miguel turned, wearing an oversized sunglass and what I assume was some kind of do-rag. What you doing in my cave, S.A.? exclaimed the dragon. But Slim Shady explained he couldn't understand him because of his redonkulous accent. What you mean you can't understand me, Weta? I be speaking good, Holmes. That's when Slim Shady explained again to the clearly Hispanic dragon that he could not understand him. Dude, I want to suck you up and spit you out, Holmes. Then Slim Shady doucetously popped his collar and said, That's what your mother said. With those epic words of douchery, the epic battle began. The dragon breathed fire at Slim Shady right off the bat. This was total trolling and god-moding move, because it was super epic and could have killed like 10,000 men. Was that the end for Slim? Fuck no, son. Now stop trying to ruin the story. Philip jumped in front of Slim and used his epic special skill, Hoe Block, shouted Philip. And with that, he threw a woman, clearly a pimpless hoe, at the dragon's fire. Her herpes was so utterly powerful that it actually absorbed Miguel's fire. 
Whoa, the fuck? Dude, the fuck? Slim Shady was utterly shocked at the criminal hotas, but decided to strike back. The real Slim Shady, please stand up, Slim shouted as Philip beatboxed and yelled, Aw yeah, in the background. As he expelled his battle cry, he jumped up over the dragon's head and kicked him in the nose, then dropped down on the dragon. The dragon had just recovered and was about to counterattack. Things looked bleak. I'm gonna mess you up, wet Miguel shut his mouth. Fuck you, cried Slim. Just then, Slim Shay interrupted the dragon by jamming the cross stick of fuck you into the dragon's urethra. For the stupid hoes and bros out there, that's the hole the tip of your penis leads to. Oh, I felt that. Wait, God, give me a minute. Okay, I'm good now. So, the dragon's eyes teared and he fell to the ground. Slim Shay ripped the lacrosse rig out of the dead dragon's body and knuckle bumped Philip. Bro, you're my bro, bro. With that, they went to the back of the cave, pillaging and heading home. They bought a yacht by selling the internets on Craigslist and had a yacht party in Rapel. It was so epic, they took over North Korea and went on to smurf all the smurfs in Smurfville, which is more smurfs than any smurf has ever smurfed. Slim Shay and Philip became the biggest ballers in all the land, and they totally forgot about his abandoning mom who probably died in a crack house somewhere. And they lived happily ever brofter. Ben. We can stop recording now. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>